There is no official blueprint for DayZ, but there are still do's and don'ts that dictate exactly how your time spent will go. And here, I'm going to break down the things everybody seems to do wrong in the hopes it can save you time, effort and the occasional cracked screen. If you like the video, please leave a like or a subscribe, it really helps me out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Ha! <laughs> and that's what you get for trying to share food and give me equipment. Wait, am I the bad guy? Firstly, it's a bit of a controversial one. It's running everywhere. This is such a debated topic and okay, I do it. But it's wrong, wasteful and stupid. If you jog, you burn way fewer calories and go much further in the end. This wastes fewer resources, keeps you alive longer when low and not sprinting allows you to quickly speed away in emergencies instead of being low on stamina when you need it most. Next is don't fix up a car. If you're on a populated server, someone will have a car already fixed somewhere. Usually around the outskirts of the map or parked in their base. People also do loot runs in vehicles, so if you see one driving down the road, you can usually track it given it will likely be heading to a base or towards the largest town in that direction. This isn't always the way, but it's certainly useful. It takes around the same amount of time to find one, so you might as well just do that. Just go out and steal a car. Wait, wait, maybe not in real life. Disclaimer. Then we have constructing a base on a server you're not really committed to. This is a classic blunder. It's a time sink with little to no return on investment. Opt for creating hidden stashes instead. They're quicker to set up, easier to access, and significantly reduce the risk of losing your gear to raids. This strategy not only makes transitioning between servers seamless, but also enhances your overall enjoyment and success in the game. Easier to get harder to see. Next, engaging in every fight is a waste of precious resources and can attract further unwanted attention. Sometimes the lesser geared player isn't worth going after. The second you fire, you're going to alert everybody to your location. You then have to approach and sift through their inventory safely and then leave unnoticed. You should choose your battles wisely, considering the potential loot versus risk ratio expenditure. I think that's right. Sometimes avoidance is the best strategy. But next is somewhat related to the last one. It's not knowing when to quit. There's a moment in every standoff where the risk to reward ratio shifts rapidly. Sometimes you just need to cut your losses and run. Despite this, most players are stubborn. They get tunnel vision and see only one way out of the situation. But this is rarely the case. Your main goal is to survive, not kill. If you're in a battle that seems as though it could go either way, if you lose the advantage or if you just don't feel confident ditch immediately cover your flank and retreat you'll probably get another shot but strategic repositioning is a very loose term and sometimes that repositioning is four towns over heading in a different direction than your assailant next is switching to a new server when it gets dark darkness is the best time to raid to be stealthy to loot high tier locations and so on and so forth once you get used to night travel you'll start to focus Focus on certain tasks over others. It is a different type of gameplay. It's also probably the best time to build because there are so few players venturing through the forests of a night when it's pitch black. In non pitch black servers, the vision loss is a little more than minimal, and yet many people still leave. This gives you even less risk because you can go about your normal activities. Next is carrying two guns at once. Carrying two guns at once might seem like a good idea but it can have a bit of a downside. The extra weight slows you down and drains your stamina, you lose useful slots, and well, you've just given the next player more guns. A smarter approach is to equip a single firearm with a versatile scope. This not only lightens your load, but also prepares you for a variety of combat scenarios without the need to switch weapons. Next, you need to manage your inventory better. Carrying too much loot can slow you down and make you an easy target. There's just no reason to ever have a full inventory for 99% of situations. Be selective about what you carry. Prioritize essentials and high value items. This also creates a stamina issue, which I mentioned before. Just because an item has a use, it doesn't mean that item is useful. Next, new players focus on food when spawning in. Okay, so I get this one. It's understandable. The food can feel like it's on a somewhat timer. It kind of is. However, this is the wrong focus. Food should be 
a focus not the focus focus on general survival and everything else will fall into place by searching houses for clothes tools and survival gear you will come across food naturally this doesn't have to be your main focus if anything it will cost you in the long run then we have this one. Many players rely solely on found items, neglecting the vast potential of crafting. From improvised weapons and tools to medical supplies and traps, crafting can enhance your survival capabilities tenfold. And the best thing here is you can carry minimal items that branch out into several useful craftables. Understanding and utilizing the crafting system can make you more self-sufficient and adaptable, but many players just don't bother to learn anything past the basic fire and a few other essentials. But the number one thing people do wrong in DayZ is not putting the effort in to learn what they should learn. And you can avoid that mistake by clicking here or by clicking here. And as always, until next time.